Did the Hamas just now threaten the mountain of God? Yes, they did. And it's really important for you to understand what they said and why. This is David Tal. This is the Balagan Connection. And today we're going to be connecting a couple of very interesting subjects that I think play an important role in what's going on right now. We're going to be connecting Mount Moriah, that's the Temple Mount, to the El Aqsa Mosque and different things that have El Aqsa as their name. We're going to be connecting the Muslim, uh, the Muslim month of Ramadan, which is coming up and everybody's talking about it in the news, with the Jewish festival of Simchat Torah or the giving of the law. And we're going to see how all of them connect. And I need you to come out with an understanding about the war that is going on in the land right now. It's not a war between Israel and Hamas. It's not even a war between Jews and Muslims. It is a war between God and the deceiver, God and Satan himself. And one of the ways that he's fighting this war is by putting his mark on God's hill or God's mountain on Mount Moriah. So stay with me and let's start off with what the Hamas is saying. This is a recording of the head of Hamas, Ismail Aniyah, who sits in Qatar, by the way, not in, in uh, Gaza. And this is what he is calling for all of the Arab world to do. Listen to this closely because it has a very um, impactful connection to what we're talking about. <laughs> بأن يشد الرحال إلى الأقصى منذ اليوم الأول لشهر رمضان المبارك زرافات ووحدانة للصلاة فيه والاعتكاف والقيام. Look at what he's saying. He is saying to Muslims, come to El Aqsa, come to this mosque on the the hill in the middle of Jerusalem on the Temple Mount, and we will start our rebellion there. What I want to do in a couple of minutes is connect to what Mount Moriah is, what El Aqsa is, how they connect, and talk about Ramadan and the 8th of October so we understand what happened. Let's start with Mount Moriah. And in order to understand the importance of that mountain that sits in the middle of Jerusalem that we call the Temple Mount, I'm going to start off with a passage from Genesis chapter 22, verse 1. And it says this, it came to pass after these things that God decided to test Abraham. And he said to him, Abraham. And Abraham said, here I am. By the way, that's something that we all have to do. When God calls, we say, here we are. And then he said, take your son, your only son Isaac, that you love, and go to the mountain of Moriah. Well, it says the land of Moriah, but go to Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains that I will show you. Everything that we know says that that mountain, Mount Moriah, is the mountain that sits in the middle of the city of Jerusalem, what we call the Temple Mount. And that's really important because that mountain becomes the epicenter of God's affairs in the world. That becomes God's classroom. Moria. Mori is teacher in Hebrew. Yah is God. Moriah literally means God's teacher, or like I like to call it. That's God's classroom. And that's where God taught Abraham what obedience was. That's where God taught David what happens if you don't obey. And if you go to 2 Samuel chapter 24, there's a whole story about David who sinned against God. And he was punished on Mount Moriah. The angel of the Lord stood on top of the threshing floor and actually punished David. David buys up the plot of land, and when he dies, his son Solomon, go back to Chronicles chapter, 2 Chronicles chapter 3, and that's where Solomon builds the temple and starts the sacrifice system that is the first system of salvation from sin. Mount Moriah is also where they build the temple, and later on the temple is destroyed and rebuilt. And during the time of Jesus, that is the temple that Jesus comes to and teaches in. That becomes the epicenter of spiritual life. And that is the same mountain that on the other side of it, on the other slope, is where God did what Abraham didn't do. God brought his son and put him on, not the altar, but on the cross, on the slope of Mount Moriah, and sacrificed him there for all of us. So if you understand the importance of all of that, 
Why am I not surprised that when the Muslims conquered the city of Jerusalem in, in 690, on top of Mount Moriah, they put their symbol. And what sits on top of Mount Moriah today, that golden dome and the big building that you see next to it, is called the Al-Aqsa Mosque in the Dome of the Rock. And those are holy sites for Muslims today. It's called the Al-Aqsa Mosque because according to Surah 17 in the Quran, Muhammad got on his magical beast, El Burek, flew out to the furthest mosque, got off his beast, went up to the top of the hill where the Golden Dome is, kicked off and went up into heaven to have a powwow. And that turned Mount Moriah into the noble sanctuary according to the Muslims, and that turned it into the third holiest site for Islam. Now again, why am I not surprised that the enemy puts his symbols on God's classroom? Why is that important? Because this is now the focal point of the battle of Hamas against Israel. Now Israel has gone through a big, deep debate about whether we should allow Muslims on the Temple Mount during this very sensitive period. And Israel has basically decided that we will respect the religion of other of religions, we will respect other people's traditions, and we will allow Muslims up on the Temple Mount during Ramadan, even though the Temple Mount has become a place where the tension flares up. So we decided to take a chance and allow the Muslims on the Temple Mount during Ramadan, okay? But this is what the Hamas does. It's using that. It's using our appeasement. It's using our patience. It's using our spiritual or religious respect against us and is calling for a day of, of violence. It's calling for all Muslims to come together. And, and this might be the focal point. This might be the, 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 the match that starts off the, the whole Balagan again. So, so you understand that the Muslims are using Mount Moriah and it's not by chance that the logo of Hamas and I'm going to put the logo of Hamas here behind me so you see what I'm talking about. The logo of Hamas is literally the Dome of the Rock on top of Mount Moriah. They call it the Al-Aqsa. And look at the symbol of Hamas and, and a couple of words just so you understand what we're dealing with. On the top of the symbol of Hamas, you can see the map of Israel. But the map of Israel from the river to the sea. This is a map of this area without Israel. That's what Hamas is saying. You can see the two Palestinian flags on the side. And one flag in Arabic says there is no other God but Allah. They're actually saying we are superimposing. We are moving your gods out. We are putting our gods in. And you see the cross swords on top of the Dome of the Rock that sits on top of Mount Moriah. It's a spiritual battle. It's a much bigger battle than what's going on on the ground. And, and when you understand it like that, let's tie one more thing. The ninth month in the, in the Muslim uh, calendar is the month of Ramadan. It is a spiritual month. They fast during the day. They eat in the evenings, time for spiritual contemplation. And the reason that the month of Ramadan is marked off as a spiritual month is because according to their tradition, that's when Muhammad, Muhammad received the Quran for the first time. Why am I not surprised that that connects to October 7th? Because October 7th, they called what they did, that terrible terrorist attack, okay, they called it the Al-Aqsa flood. This is Al-Aqsa flooding out. And why am I not surprised that they actually pulled it, they dated it, they put it on the date of the Jewish celebration of Simchat Torah. Simchat Torah is the Jewish celebration of us receiving the Bible. So they're superimposing all these different elements. Ramadan, where he receives the Quran, and us receiving the Bible, and that becomes the flashpoint for where we are. What I'm trying to say, this is a war against everything that I hold dear, but this is a war against everything that you hold dear. You need to understand this is not just another war in Jerusalem. This is not a call by Hamas, okay, to start another demonstration. This is a call to erode everything that Mount Moriah, God's classroom, represents to all of us who take the Bible seriously, to all of us who take the Old Testament seriously, and to all of us who take the New Testament seriously. 
This is the flashpoint. This is where it's going to come together. And just to tie it in in a, in a unique manner, those of you who've been on tour with me have heard me say this before. At the end of it all, in the book of Revelation, God talks about bringing the new Jerusalem back down. It's the new millennial Jerusalem. It's the new Jerusalem that's going to sit on top of Mount Moriah that is going to be indicative of everything that Jesus represents in the world. No sorrow, no pain, no hunger. Everything is going to be right when Mount Moriah is back to being God's classroom. And from there, it'll spread out to the rest of the world. So this is a very interesting connection that I think I needed to make. Um, watch what's going on because the, the month of Ramadan, um, the, the hostage negotiation, there's still 134 hostages inside, is all coming together. And, and this is going to be a flashpoint of, as you can see, both the spiritual dynamic, the military dynamic, the political dynamic, everything coming together. And that's what the Balagan connection likes to bring together. As you can see, I still haven't shaved. I'm still mourning my father-in-law. So those of you who know of uh, Jeff Johnson, the pastor of Calvary Chapel, Downey, uh, he passed away two weeks ago, and, and we are missing him dearly. Um, if you want to connect to his legacy, his teachings, or his ministry, uh, there's going to be a link below here to Gijon Springs. Gijon Springs is actually the spring of water that bubbles out from underneath Mount Moriah that was the source of water for the city of Jerusalem and is one of the two rivers that is mentioned in uh, in the book of Genesis coming out of the Garden of Eden. That's uh, Pastor Jeff Johnson and Karen's legacy. I will be connected to that. So if you're interested in that, and and again, Watch what's going to happen. It's going to be a very, very interesting time. This is David Tal. This is a Balagan Connection. Hope to see you again soon.